guess that's how you can afford suits like the one you're wearing. I'm not the guy who's got Rolls Royce parked around the corner, huh? Wait, wait a minute. I'm not the guy. Hey. Hey, you. You old enough to be looking at that? Yeah. Put it back. I'm 18. You gotta be 42 to look at that. Take it 52. Good morning, Mr. Grant. Oh, hi, Mrs. Finchon. Want the trip? No, thank you. I get that free. Time's in? Thank you. You know, on my way to work this morning, I was held up for 20 minutes by construction. That's not my department. Well, I have an idea for a series of articles. I'd like you and Mr. Hugh to drop up to the office later on. After you've finished your paper route, that is. Well, where have you been? Why would you go if you've been drinking coffee for three hours? Oh. Well, you shouldn't leave your stand open. This is the third time in the last month I've done this. I'm tired of doing it. Well, I got an answer for you. What? Don't do it. People that rob you blind. No, they won't. Oh, you're too trusty. Ain't that at all. It's just that people know what it would do to them if I caught them stealing from me. Word in the street is I killed a guy with my bare hand. Did you? No, it was one guy. And I just beat him insensible. But you know how people love to exaggerate. I got kind of a problem, and I wonder if I can talk to you. No, I guess I got a minute. See, I, I live in the Mission Heights district. You know where all this new development's going on. Yeah. See, and I've been living there a long time. I mean, a long time. And I've been seeing all this building going on and, and tearing down, and it just seems to be getting close and close to where I live. You gotta move, huh? No, I ain't gonna move. No way I'm gonna move. Sometimes it can be good to move. I went through it myself. No way. Got a special reason. Look, maybe we can talk about it later. I, I've got a meeting. Oh, sure. Important man like you must have lots of meetings. Earl, maybe you should talk about this with a lawyer or something. Forget it. Forget I ask. Go on to your meeting. Every day on my way to work, I pass an old Mexican church. It's not a building particularly distinctive architecturally, but it has a certain character and quaintness. I always get a sense of security driving by and seeing it standing there. I can remember seeing it even when I was a little girl. Well, to make my point, this morning it wasn't there. Overnight, it had been reduced to a pile of pink adobe rubble. Los Angeles. The disposable city. That church ought to have been saved. I know what you mean. Now, Mr. Hume probably knows what I'm leading up to. Every few years, I go on a rampage trying to save some of the history of this city. Oh, yeah. I remember that last rampage. <laughs> well, I hardly think rampage is an accurate word. That's right. Come to think of it, it wasn't a rampage. Well, anyway, we don't always succeed in trying to save our landmarks and traditions, but it, it's always certainly worth a try. One thing you can say for San Francisco. When you're up there, you get the feeling that they're really proud of their past. Too many people in L.A. think new is good, even if it's ugly. So, gentlemen, I feel a rampage coming on. That downtown demolition derby. Let's look into it. I've got somebody to put on it right away. He's got somebody to put on it right away. Oh, hey, what do you know about L.A.? That's just it. Nothing. I want to see L.A. before they tear it down. Well, you better hurry up and get over to Dodger Stadium. Why? Because it's been there for 15 years. Its days are numbered.
why I know why they want to tear it down. They're going to knock this building down, too. What are these guys going to eat when a mission comes down? Well, it's going to be a revolving restaurant on top of the new building. It's an old Armitage trademark. If this was ancient Egypt, Armitage would have one stuck on top of the Great Pyramid, slowly turning. Yeah. Swell view of the Nile while you dine. Sammy Sphinx on the piano. Hey, come on. <laughs> hey, hey, this Angel's Mission is a great old place. Come on, you gotta see it. Hey, help yourself to bread, boys. Is that all you're having? You like to come back for a sec? Hey, Captain. Hello, Dennis. I eat here all the time. Get your clothes here, too. Dennis? Good to see you again. Yeah. Did you meet some friends? Grab a drink, Ellis. Oh, we'll pay, of course. When a man's hungry, we don't ask payment or prayer. Lou Grant. He's my city editor. Oh, this is the guy. Well, everybody's welcome, no matter what. Uh, Joe Ross. <laughs> Grab a drink. Hey, there's Fifth Street. Nice young fellow. Yeah. Comes down sometimes just to swap stories with the boys. Uh, I'll bet he's got some great ones. Well, they love him. Haven't seen you in a long time. How you been, Fifth? Oh, uh, mm -hmm. Thank you. Hey, baby. Uh, hey. What brings you fellas down? We're doing a series on how the city's changing. Uh, Mission Heights Renewal. Yeah, kind of looking for an angle. Something that seems to have escaped us so far. Excuse me, Governor, I see a friend of mine. Excuse me. I hope you closed your stand down. Don't matter. I got big shots to fill in for me while I eat. Big executives. Live around here? Across the street. Across the street? What are you going to do when they tear that down? I told you. I'm not going nowhere. You must have gotten an eviction notice. Sure, I've gotten an eviction notice, but I tore it up. Tearing it up won't change a thing, Earl. Other people got that piece of paper. They pack up and they leave, and they knock that building down. But not me. I'm not budging. I'm not leaving. Hey, Earl. I heard of a place over on 10th Street. Our kind of price, you can move in tomorrow. Captain, I've been telling you, I got a place. And I'm telling you, you won't have for long. They're pulling it all down, whether you like it or not. And that's what I've been trying to get across to him. Like hell. Like hell, it will. these walls. 
You mean to tell me you're going to tear down a man's life? Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on B and &B. You feel it's not your kind of story, I'll assign Billy. No, no, I can see it's got a great human interest angle. I'll write it. What's the matter? What's bothering you? I just know how it's going to end. Maybe not. Well, you heard the guy say his whole life's on those walls, and the bulldozers are ready to chew it up. Yeah, I heard. So when am I going to see some copy? Late today. All right. I'll budget your first assignment for tomorrow. Ten books plus art, okay? Okay. Okay. Budget meeting in 40 minutes. There's a menu so far. Um, uh, what's, uh, what's the art editor's number? 703. She's in Venice. Italy, not California. I need an art expert's opinion as to whether something is good. Well, can't go wrong with a bullfight poster. If you're, uh, if you're starting an art collection, you're smart if you get some advice. Mm-hmm. I bought what I thought was a pastel once. Turned out to be a litho with chalk over it. Well, who should I call? Uh, uh, anybody know a gallery owner? Well, there's a heavyweight on the paper in the local art scene. You're kidding. You mean Mrs. Pinchon. Thank God. Yeah, she really knows her onions. I showed her some oil paintings my wife and I bought. She hated them. <laughs> Blows your mind, huh? I don't know if I would use those words, Dennis. But yes, it blows my mind. I shot two rolls of color for Sunday. They're in the wash. I'd like to see them as soon as possible. Yes, What's the matter with the dog? Bonnie, stop that. Now come here. Dogs like me. Why don't you try changing your socks? Socks? <laughs> Mr. Grant, I think you've stumbled onto a treasure. Really? No kidding? Are you sure? Well, I'll know when I see the real thing. Remarkable, just remarkable. The, the problem is there's no way to separate it from the walls. It's all part of the walls. And the building is on a block slated for demolition. It's part of the Mission Heights project. Tyler Armitage is just tearing down a couple of blocks and is going to put up a half a million square feet of office space. Julie, would you get me Tyler Armitage? Uh, try the museum first. Oh, it has such an emotional impact. Now, you say this man's never had any formal art training? He said no. What's his name? Earl Humphrey. You know him. I don't think so. He runs a newsstand on the corner. Uh, I just didn't know his name. Yes, Julie. Oh, put him right through. Hello, Tyler. Margaret, you must have been reading my mind. I was just about to call you. The new Botticelli is in place. Yes. Well, I've sent out invitations to the press preview, of course, but certain special people I wanted to call personally. Margaret, do you know that I've been trying to get this painting for 12 years? How very pleased you must be. Pleased? I'm as excited as a kid. It's the crowning jewel of my collection. I look forward to seeing it. Now, I would like to return the favor. I have something that I think you, as an art patron, should see. Well, I'd love to, but I'm going to New York right after the opening. Well, New York will always be there. Won't this? Perhaps not, Tyler, and that's why I think it's so important you see this before you go. I'll have my secretary call your office with the address. Now, I'll come see the Botticelli, and you come see the Humphrey. Now, it's Earl Humphrey. Well, he's new. Good. Thank you, Tyler. And now... I think it's time I saw Earl Humphrey's work myself. Good God. The photographs 
shouldn't do this justice. You're the first people ever to see this. Colors. Composition. Vulnerability in those faces. Who's the beautiful woman? My wife. Over here is how she looked on our wedding day. And the children. There never was no children. About eight months after we got married, she was in a grocery store what got held up. They were shooting and she got killed. They never caught her. She died right away. I carried the hate inside me a long time. I guess I went crazy. Did all sorts of bad things. Prison is where I first started drawing on walls. It helped ease the devils out of my head, just imagining what our life would have been if that bullet hadn't taken it. It's all here. The Saturday nights we never had. The Sunday mornings that never came. Raising kids would never be born. Us growing old together. I come home here, and she's here with me. When I paint at night, we go through all the loving and the grieving and the fighting we could have done and never did. <laughs> I guess that's smart, but I thought it was bad today. machines stirring up dust. They're really going to do it, huh? Really going to tear it down? Not if we have anything to say about it. But it... It's on the walls. You can't move the whole building. Why not? They moved those mammoth Egyptian sculptures to keep them from flooding when they built the Aswan Dam. Governments will be on that project. Art is art. You don't turn it over to bulldozers. You're saying what? That this is art? Yeah. I would sure say that. Well, it ain't art. It's art, Mr. Humphrey. No, it ain't. It's just something I did. I didn't mean it to be fancy, to be looked at. It's just only for myself. It only have meaning for me. Isn't that what art is? Lou, what is she talking about? What does she mean? I guess that you're an artist. You hear what they're saying, girl? They must be crazier than I am. They're calling me an artist. installment of your Mission Heights series. Nice. Just nice? Well, it wasn't your usual style. What do you mean by that? Well, it had a kind of sensitivity. It was warmer than usual. Like you really cared about Earl Humphrey and what he's done. Rossick, I think you're a closet softy. Do you mind? I've got to finish this. What are you being so huffy about? Because it frustrates me. And all this terrific writing is often nothing. What do you mean, nothing? Look, I've been working urban renewal in this city on and off for over two years. And if there's one thing I've learned, is that nothing is going to stop it. Not this, not you, not Lou, not Mrs. Pinchon, not lawyers. I don't know. What about public opinion? It isn't worth diddly. It didn't make any difference in the Elysian Terrace project that they had 5,000 signatures, four city councilmen, a congressman, and two supervisors against it. Yeah, but did they have Joe Rossi? True. What have we got, Al? A piece on police in various cities uh, having trouble getting insurance coverage. Well, you know how they drive. <laughs> no, 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 not car insurance, uh, liability insurance. Like in case of false arrest. Or accidentally shooting somebody in the head. 
Now, for example, a school teacher in Connecticut was picked up on a stolen car wrap. That was a uh, computer error. But when she was in the holding cell, some school children were marched through the station on a field trip. Of course, some of them knew her. Pretty quick, it was all over town. She was in the slammer for Grand Theft Auto. I think I saw that on I Love Lucy about 15 years ago. <laughs> well, anyway, it illustrates the kind of problems the cops have. Now, she's suing for big bucks. Insurance companies are getting edgy. Collins wrote a good piece on it, about eight books. Why don't column two, Brad, below the fold? Give it five inches and a run over. Where's tomorrow's Humphrey story? Start there. I thought Billy was going to do a story on primitive artists, compare Humphrey to them. She did. It was terrific. I killed it. Wait a minute. Am I hearing right? A live city editor looking right at me with a lock on a page one story kills it? I figure we've taken it as far as we should. From what I hear, our reader's are reading it up. Lou, it's your kind of story. Sentimental slop. <laughs> there's good slop, and then there's this. I thought it was terrific when we had a human interest story on our own, and that we were doing what we could to save those walls of his. But after six days, let's stop milking it. Leave the poor guy alone already. Well, if we're going to have to uh, restrict ourselves to news, there's going to be a lot of blank pages. I'll tell you something else. We've led Earl into believing that we're going to pull off this miracle. We can't in any way, shape, or form guarantee that his building won't come down or his art will be saved. He's on cloud nine, Charlie, and we put him there without a net. Okay, I agree with you. We'll kill the story. Leaves us with a hole. What's foreign guy? Well, it's about time he got to foreign around here. We have a choice between political unrest in El Salvador and um, two nuns bicycling across Brazil. The nuns might be okay. Only if they're on the same bike. Sorry, Lou, we have no choice. We'll have to go with Earl. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on A&E. If court is our only option, we'll go to court. That's our first move. I'll see if I can get a judge to grant us a 30-day injunction against tearing down Earl's building. Good. That'll buy us a little time launch a more permanent course of action. Are you sure you want to do this? Yes, of course I am. I would be remiss if I didn't bring up the fact that a great deal of revenue comes to us through real estate advertising from the Tyler Armitage Corporation. The advertising department is already a little worried about a reduction in lineage, a noticeable reduction. Thank you, Mr. Sackler. You have done your legal department duty. We're talking about a great deal of money. No, Mr. Sackler, you are talking about a great deal of money. I'm talking about stopping a barbaric destruction of something that may be beyond price. Of course. I'll see to it immediately. What is this word here? Ah, it's chiascuro. That's a uh, light and shadow right in here. You mean I did that? I'd be damned. And this man painted this 500 years ago. That's right. Was he black? No. Which ones in here were black? Oh, none in that particular book. Not too many black artists. Is that what you're saying? Not during the Renaissance. Not during that renaissance, anyway. Fine French champagne in plastic glasses. That tells you something about Mr. Armitage. You think he knows about the injunction to stop the project? Oh, I think he knows. You'd never guess it from the friendly greeting you get, us, would you? All these belong to him? No, this is just a small part of his collection. He has several paintings and sculptures on loan to other museums. That's nice of him. <laughs> oh, Mr. Grant. <laughs> he doesn't do it to be nice. The money he saves on the tax write-offs would heat Nova Scotia for the winter. 
So with the chili on his cracker. Isn't that Mr. Humphrey over there? Well, it sure is. That's great. Thank you. Nice crowd. Good evening. Yes, it is. Didn't know you were coming. Mr. Armitage sent his white car for me. Big car. Lack of pimps. Uh, you understand, he owns the building you live in. Oh, I know that. First thing he said. Excuse me. Earl, so good to see you. Good evening. I'm worried about him. You think he can't handle the attention? What's going to happen if it all crashes around his ears? Oh, Mr. Grant, don't be so pessimistic. It may not happen. Astonishing, isn't it? Painted over 500 years ago for a Medici chapel. Right. In the whole Renaissance. Would it surprise you to discover that your work has much in common with his? It sure would. Color, rhythmic line, of course, but something more. I saw it immediately. Love. Botticelli has painted love's triumph over death. And that's what your work is all about, isn't it? I think it's time we had a closer look at the old master, don't you? And you don't mean Botticelli. <laughs> that wasn't meant as an idle offer. What do you think of this man here? He wants to buy my art. Oh, yeah? How much he offered? $5,000. That's a lot of money for my pictures. Well, it's not a lot of money to save some trouble when you want to knock down a building. I'm a collector of art, Mr. Grant. Oh, yeah? You gonna hang Earl's work in here? I don't exactly know what I'd do with it. I'll have to find an appropriate setting. Oh, hell, I couldn't sell it anyway. It'd be like selling my family. Well, why don't you think about it, huh? I don't have to. I'll tell you what, though. I'll paint you something else. Something smaller, say, for $200. Something nice. How about a big yellow bulldozer? It's your murals that I'm interested in. The mural that I saw. Now, I have to go to New York at noon tomorrow. Why don't you think it over and call me in the morning? I won't change my mind. Mr. Humphrey, I have a precise schedule to meet when I start building a new project. And there's just no way of delaying without it costing many tens of thousands of dollars. You talking about tearing my building down? Once a project has started, you must understand, there's just no stopping. Don't injunctions stop them? If you can get them. I'm not worried. You forget I got these good people on my side. And a big newspaper. No, sir. I ain't worried two bits worth. My building ain't coming down. Ain't that right, Lou? A jockey's agent. It was a wrong number. What's the matter with you? I'd like to hear the judge has granted that injunction. That building is supposed to come down today according to Armitage's schedule. And Earl is down there selling newspapers like he may have a place to go home to tonight. Tribune! Get the Tribune here! I got it, Earl. I got it! Got the injunction! Call me later and I'll explain it. Okay! Hurry up, honey. I'm closing up. It's a holiday. And you heard? It's Injunction Day! <laughs> what wonderful news! I think we just squeaked in. Someone said that the records were due on Humphrey's block before noon. Well, the important thing is, you did it. Now we have 30 days to get busy. I just wish that Armitage hadn't been in New York. I'd much rather have served him personally, instead of having to give that to one of his assistants. Well, that's legal, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. I could have given that to his secretary. The law says anyone empowered to act on his behalf during his absence. Well, then what are you worried about? I don't know. I guess Lou's anxiety must have rubbed off on me. 
But there's no basis for Mr. Grant's concern, is there? Not now. We just bought ourselves 30 days. In honor of our victory today, I think we ought to have champagne before lunch. How about instead of lunch? Mm -hmm. I hate to disappoint you, but they don't have champagne. Oh, I guess it'll have to be scotch. Same. I'll have a root beer. Not too strong. <laughs> White wine. Oh, well, Mr. Rossi, what were you saying about the lack of the power of the press? I guess I underestimated myself. Well, I guess we got a lot of first to drink to today. Oh, uh, this is only a beginning. We've only got a 30-day injunction. We still have plenty of work to do, but it is a step. Come, come, my good man. Make haste. Here's to the trip. Here's to Mrs. Pinchon. Here's the good writing. Here's to Earl's balls. God bless us, everyone. <laughs> Oh, it's too bad Earl can't be here with us to enjoy this. Injunction. Adjunction. Tuxedo Junction. It's all music in my head, girl. Excuse me. Hug up, you bulldozers. Back off. People kind of tough around here. It's getting so bad you can't have a quiet conversation. Oh, God. It don't seem ever like it was. So long ago. he's ever done. <coughs> uh, yeah, uh, Rachel. Mr. Hume, uh, there's a long distance call for you from New York. Mrs. Pinchon isn't in, and he asked that it be transferred to you. Who is it? Tyler Armitage. Armitage calling from New York. Wonder what he wants. Probably wants to holler a little. <laughs> okay, put him on. Hello. Yeah, Mr. Armitage, it's Charles Hume. Mr. Hume, I want you to know that I am not responsible for this. Responsible for what? What's the matter? I wouldn't break the law. Now, I admit that I was upset when you got the injunction, but I have too much respect for the courts, Mr. Hume. I wouldn't do a thing like this. Do a thing like what, Mr. Arley? The building. 
the building with Mr. Humphrey's mural. It was demolished. What? There was a foul up in communications between my office and the wrecking crew. Had I been there, this would not have happened, I swear it. Yeah, I'm sure it wouldn't. Mr. Hume, I am sorry. I'm sorry, too. I want you people to know that. Unfortunately, I cannot undo things that have been done. These things do happen. Yeah, so I've heard. Goodbye, Mr. Armitage. What? What is it? Said there was a mix-up, some foul-up at the company. Nobody told the wrecking crew when they got the injunction. Not in time, anyway. What? Earl's building went? Said he was sorry. He kept apologizing. <laughs> Sounded sincere. Well, that, that, that's swell. Just swell. He's sincere. He's sorry. Not a lot of good that's going to do. Charlie, we had an injunction. I know we had an injunction. What are you yelling at me for? My God, Charlie. What do you think this is doing to Earl? Where's Ross? City Hall. Why? They went ahead and tore Earl's building down. What about the injunction? Exactly. What about the injunction? Billy, have you seen the animal? He's out cruising somewhere. What's wrong? They just turned Earl Humphrey's murals into powder. They knocked his building down. All those beautiful pictures? How could they? They got word about the injunction too late, they said. Get me the animal. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. No, Luke, no sign of Earl. Nobody has seen him? Some workers. They chased him off the rubble about an hour ago, said he was acting crazy. But check around. You got any hot film? No, I already dropped it off. I'm clear for maybe half an hour. Well, call me if you find anything. Sure will, Luke. Maybe 40 minutes ago. How upset was he? About as angry as I've ever seen anybody. He grabbed the kitchen knife and ran out of here. And you let him? Well, what was I supposed to do? Would you like to try to take a knife away from him? Didn't say anything. Well, something about they killed her twice. He kept saying that. I don't know what that means. I think I do. What are you saying? A knife. Are you sure? Oh, my. No, no. Come on in. We'll do something. All right, who's he talking to? Animal. Earl was just at the mission. He left with a knife in the kitchen. Sounds like he went a little nuts. Can we call the cops? I don't want to make that call to you. Do you think he'd hurt himself? No, I don't think he would. He might go after Armitage. Really? Armitage? You think he'd actually try and knock him off? No, wait. Armitage is in the east, and Earl knows that. Well, who else? Then? There's no one else. A lady. A 500-year-old lady. The Botticelli. Call the Armitage Wing at the museum. Give them Earl's description. No, wait. The guards will try to grab him, and he'll probably freak out. Get Animal back. Tell him to pick me up out front. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on B&B. Cheese Whiz cheese spread has one-third less fat than... He returns to Lou Grant. Still alive, though, huh? The, the man is dust. 
but the picture is as alive today as the day he painted it. You think you're an artist? Why you say that? Are you an artist, Earl? Yeah. Yeah, I'm an artist. Then you're gonna do that? Right. I don't think you want to do that anymore, Earl. Now, we have to figure out a way for you to back down gracefully. Now, how are we going to do that? You got me. Well, now, just, just give me a minute to think. Just, just, just give me a minute now. Now, the, the painting's still going to be there. Huh. Now, now let's, let's, just, let's just figure it out. I got it. No, that's not it. Uh, come on, Earl, help me out. I'm not going to help you. You too dumb to figure out a reason why I shouldn't chop up a, a beautiful thing like this. You were sneaky, Lou. You know that. a new loft. I was thinking I might look him up. Here's the assignment sheet. You're great, Earl. I think you're the greatest. What do you know about anything? You're just a kid. Well, I'm not a kid, and I think the same thing. You know, if you're having a hard time getting started, Earl, whenever I'm stuck, I've got this little trick that works for me. What's that? I say to myself, what's the worst that could happen? Could be garbage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I guess old Botticella had his slow days, too. Mm-hmm. When are you going to start using these canvases? As soon as I use up these walls. <laughs> What are the interpretations of Bram Stoker's Dracula? Trick or Treat Week begins with an all-new biography tonight. Now James Farentino stars in Police Story, next on a and &E. 